Hi, today I would like to play a game with you. Here is a list of different planets and their period observed by the astronomer uh, orbiting around the sun and also somehow we find out the distance from that planet to the sun as well. So this is actually the number that observed by a very famous astronomer as we mentioned earlier, Kappa. Well, not this one, but this one. All right, and he took a really long time to use simply a telescope to write down lots of data, and eventually he obtained you know some data like this, and then he actually find out there's a pattern between these two sets of data. I would like you to spend some time and think about what exactly is the relationship, mathematical relationship of these two. You don't have to convert this back to whatever SI unit, just use this number, will be fine. And remember, Kepa's fine at that time, and he did not use any calculator. So if you could, reframe yourself from using calculator and try to observe that. So pause the video now and try it out yourself. 2000 years later. Okay, so if you haven't found it out, okay, fine. Go and use your calculator. You may even use Excel to input all this and help you to sort it out. There is actually a way to do it if you use Excel. So pause the video now if you want to try it out or if you already find the answer, just continue with this video. A few moments later. The answer is actually T squared, which T of office is the period, over R, which is like the distance that we just talked about, to the power of three. And that should equal to a constant. So uh, you may like to try it out if you haven't really find out the relationship. So if I try to use the first set of data that we have got 0 0.241 square divide 0 0.39 to the power of three, you get something like this. All right, the value that you get is going to be 0 0.979129. We can try another one, let's say Venus. So 0 0.615 square divide 0 0.72 to the power of 3. This is going to be 1.0133. Well, yes, you may say hey, it's not exactly the same, but then this is going to be very, very close enough. And uh, I mean, the data itself may contain some sort of absolute uncertainty. So uh, I would say this is pretty good enough. Like if you think about this, it's like three to 4% of uncertainty. And I think this is really good already. Well, let's do another one, Pluto. And so that's going to be 248 to the power of two, divide 39.44 to the power of three. And again, here you get 1.00251, okay? And so this is a way that we try to verify. Um, how could we do it in Excel then? Let me show you. Okay, so these are the data that you know I just directly copy from you know the uh, data set. So if you try to plot them on a graph, then this is a line that you get, and obviously you can tell it's a curve simply. So if you try to add the trend line, um, obviously these won't fit. If you try polynomial, it won't fit. If you try power equation, that probably is the best. And if you try to display the equation, then this is the equation that you are going to get. So uh, if you are you know, familiar with what we learned earlier, then you can actually directly get this index, which is 0 0.66, very close to 2 over 3. And then you can deduce relationship between uh, the period and also the distance. If you like to use a more uh, systematic approach, the other way that you can do, guess what, is to linearize the graph. And so to linearize it, we can simply take the log function. And actually I've done it already. So down below, these are the corresponding log value of like the period and distance. So I use obviously uh, the log function on Excel. So uh, they will be the corresponding value. Okay, and so using that, uh, we'll be able to find out a new graph, which is this one. And so um, then we can deduce, basically deduce the relationship between the two. And so let me try to derive it to you. So we have, uh, this is actually log P 
period so log t and, and so this is definitely log r right yeah that's right so that means this equation can be rewrite as log r equals to 0 0.6664 which again uh, should be very very close to 2 over 3 log t plus this this is basically zero so uh, like how we show earlier then we can have um, the log 3 log r equals to 2 log t or you can see already quite obviously r to the power 3 and then t power to 2 uh, with the log and then you take out the log away and then this is the relationship that you find I mean that is the one that I just mentioned right here it should equal to a constant of course if you change it to um, different unit then uh, this constant may be different but anyway it is still very amazing that kappa back to that time okay this was before Newton by the way if you remember uh, when I first introduced you the gravitational law uh, kappa find out this one first and this actually helped Newton to deduce the law of gravitation so in fact t squared over r cubed equal to constant this is actually a law we call it kappa's third law okay which don't worry you don't have to uh, learn it officially in ib physics syllabus but then i think it's definitely something you should know and i think all physics students should know about it one way of finding out the kappa's law from deriving equation could be considering the orbital motion in fact what I'm trying to ask you to do right now is going to be a reverse engineering in fact like I said in the history the Kappa's third law came out first and then we have the gravitational force but now what we're trying to do is we let's say we already know the gravitational law and also the circular motion equation then we can use them to find out the Kappa's law so let me give you some time try to consider this situation and again use the gravitational law and also the circular motion try to find out the expression of Kappa's third law a few moments later let me show you how we can do it and by the way I always feel satisfying doing this for some reason let's start with f equals to ma and here we are performing circular motion so of course let's specify them as centripetal force and centripetal acceleration for the centripetal force the only force that maintaining the motion is gravitational force so governed by the gravitational law formula g big m small m over r square according to you know the symbol here and then we have the small m and for centripetal acceleration you may use v square over r but then we want to link it to kappa's law right and so we don't want to use v because there's no t in it instead uh, let's look at our data booklet and the one that we want to use probably is 4 pi square r over t square so 4 pi r, 4 pi square r over t square right yeah that's the one and so I think if you have written that then it's pretty obvious now the small m will cancel out and then you would have um, the r on the same side so r will be on the same side out to the power of 3 and then you can move the t square on the other side and then keep the rest on the other side so that's gonna be 4 pi square over the big m and over the big g as well yeah I think that's all and if you try to look at these thing pi is going to be constant big G is a universal constant as well M is referring to the center like the, the mass at the center that is giving the attraction so obviously this is going to be constant as well so that's why this is going to be a constant and it's amazing again for Kappa I really have to praise again uh, for him to observe such a mathematical relationship without a calculator so he really have a really good intuition and try really hard to um, collect all the data because it's not easy to find out the period 
and also the distance right somehow he uh, got to find out the distance also and so this is how you can get a law named after yourself back that time I mean nowadays maybe you can if you find out a certain ratio that is really important then you can name it uh, after your name that's all for this video from now on I hope when you look at the sky look at the planet you start to appreciate how Kappa find out such a pattern in the sky I hope you enjoy learning physics with me if you do so please hit the like button now and subscribe to my channel I'll see you again in the next video bye